I'm Sean Canan, and you're listening to Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting to you from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. So let me let me go now to our next guest, who is Heather St. Amand, and she's an organizer and a parent in the Tampa Bay area. She wrote a column in the Tampa Bay Times that she's leaving Florida with her transgender daughter because of policies championed by DeSantis. Welcome to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Heather. Hi, Sean. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad you could join us. And I wish it were better, under better circumstances. So you've made the decision to move out of the state because things in Florida are so bad for your family. Tell us about it. Yeah, um, and it was a really, really tough decision. Florida and the Tampa Bay area, this is all I know. This is my home. This is where my parents are and are still going to be and most of my family. But I have a teenage trans daughter and she's not safe here anymore. Um, DeSantis has made it his mission to make Florida unsafe for both trans and non-binary folks and just the LGBTQ community in general. Yesterday, we uh, we heard from the Florida Senate. There was a Senate panel where this was uh, this bill advanced in this Senate panel. Judges can now, cons well, when, if this bill becomes law, judges could consider parents' objections to medical treatments such as puberty blockers when they're modifying or deciding custody agreements for transgender children under a measure that was approved yesterday by this Senate committee. I think the vote was eight to three along party lines. Just one, one example of the kind of many uh, bills that that focus on transgender and, and people and especially transgender youth. And you're saying that this is affecting your family. And if these bills get passed, or maybe even some of the bills that have already become law in Florida are just going to make it impossible for you and your family to continue to live here. Absolutely. And um, I don't know if you know that. Well, I'm sure you know that they just filed a bill um, recently, SB 1674, um, where people are going to be able to challenge folks in bathrooms. It's it's where you can only go your assigned you know gender at birth into those bathrooms. Who's going to be policing that? Like that's just going to make vigilantes out of regular folks and put trans folks in even more harm's way. And we heard from a parent in the Florida Panhandle who spoke yesterday in the Florida legislature. Her name is Denise Barber. And uh, I'm quoting uh, from the News Service of Florida here. She said, the language in this bill, the bill, not the one that you just referred to about the bathrooms, but the one about the medical treatment, the language in this bill is scary. It's horrific. I'm scared to death for my trans son and my trans granddaughter. And I'm wondering if it's time for me to leave my home state where I've lived my whole life. So it's not just you. Uh, Heather, it's other parents in Florida here, in this case, in the panhandle, and I'm sure that this isn't the first time they've faced adversity in the panhandle, but they're saying maybe this is the limit. Now we can't really live in what's called free Florida anymore. And it's not free anymore. It's not. That's the most ridiculous slogan that DeSantis is touting. This place is becoming less free by the day. Um, when my child came out to me at 12 as trans, I knew that she didn't want to be here anymore if I couldn't intervene and get her gender affirming care. If we couldn't stop puberty in its tracks and allow her that time and space to breathe, I don't know that my daughter would be here anymore. As a parent, that's not something I could accept. So, of course, I'm going to follow my medical team's advice and we're going to do everything that we can to keep my daughter whole healthy, and happy, because she's perfect just the way she is. Our guest is Heather St. Amon, an organizer and a parent in the Tampa Bay area. She is leaving Florida with her transgender daughter because of policies championed by Governor Ron DeSantis. And this is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. Let's back up a second. You mentioned that your daughter is and your team of medical professionals recommended gender-affirming care to stop puberty. So tell us about that. A lot of us might not be familiar with these terms or might not know what they exactly mean. So what, what kind of gender affirming care are you talking about? Absolutely. Um, I am an open book. We've been very transparent. Um, when she was 12, we were able to get her started on Lupron, um, a pediatric dose. And what Lupron is, it's actually, um, this is a uh, an off-label use for it. It's actually used um, for folks that are um, 
trying to inhibit um, testosterone based cancers from occurring. It, it stops testosterone production. Um, so it's used as a, as a cancer drug. Um, all this medication does is put a pause button. It just pauses the testosterone production. As soon as you stop taking it, the testosterone production resumes. So people falsely think that this is some irreversible thing that causes damage. It's a pause button that allows for these children to not have to grow into a body that they don't identify with. It gives them time and space to grow. It's nothing irreversible. It's nothing, people think that we're out here mutilating young people. That's not accurate. Giving somebody breathing room and a pause, that's gender affirming care. Um, as far as hormones go, hormones weren't started right away. That's not something that was started until after the teen years and because of bone density. You just have to make sure that, you know, for other reasons, obviously, but for bone density reasons, you need to do that as well. And all of this, as you kind of alluded to earlier, is under medical supervision. There's there's a doctor Absolutely. or a team of doctors, perhaps, I don't know, uh, that's that's making sure that all of this is in the best health interests of your daughter. Absolutely. And when she first came out to me, we happened to have a pediatrician appointment like a few days later. And I said, you know what? I bet you have questions that I can't answer. Would you be okay with us talking to your pediatrician so that we can get some guidance? Our pediatrician was amazing. We then got referred to an even more specialist pediatrician, a psychologist who is amazing, and a, a fabulous pediatric endocrinologist. This team helped me save my daughter's life, and I will be forever indebted to them. Just as recently as this past spring, I went to make an appointment for my daughter with my endocrinologist, with her endocrinologist. We were told because of her diagnosis and the new laws, they couldn't see anyone at that pediatric endocrinologist anymore with her diagnosis. This is the endocrinologist that she's been seeing since she was 12 years old, all because of this Florida state law. Let's go to hear more about what the law that was being considered in a Florida Senate panel was yesterday. We're, we have our partners at WFSU in Tallahassee, and there, here's what they reported on what happened yesterday in the legislature. A bill that codifies a ban on gender-affirming care for transgender kids got its first hearing in the state legislature yesterday. The reporter, Regan McCarthy, is telling us that the measure comes as the Florida Board of Medicine's ban will take effect this coming Thursday. Backs a ban on gender affirming care such as puberty blockers for Floridians under 18. It provides a limited exception for some youth whose treatment is already underway. Members of the public spoke at the hearing, and Democratic State Senator Tracy Davis said she heard one overarching message. All I could hear was, Love me as I am. Love me as I am. Words hold an incredible amount of power. And that's something that I think this legislature should remember. Davis said just by hearing the bill, lawmakers are creating rhetoric that threatens transgender people. I'm Regan McCarthy in Tallahassee. And I'm Sean Canan, and I'm broadcasting from the studios of Tampa, WMNF Tampa, that is. Heather St. Amand is my guest, and she's an organizer and parent in the Tampa Bay area. She's writing, she writes that she's leaving Florida with her transgender daughter because of policies championed by Governor DeSantis. While we were playing that story about what the Florida legislature did yesterday, Heather, I saw you nodding your head in agreement with the uh, with the, the the Democratic state representative who was saying that all these speakers are just saying that they want you to love them, that they want to be loved the, the way they are. So uh, why were you nodding? Because that's all trans folks want, to be loved and accepted and just be, just be who they are. Like, how is it wrong just to be? just to be. What would a bill like this, if it be, does become law, if it means that, you know, now judges can take into, uh, in, into account um, when they're deciding things like custody, how would this impact a family like yours? 
um, it would impact our family greatly. Her father and I didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things. He is now on board, um, but it could have been ugly. I mean, I'm the primary parent, um, but yeah, that could have been very ugly. And this is going to traumatize a lot of children. It's very traumatic already, already to to not identify with the body that you're in, but to have all of the noise surrounding it, it's traumatizing. So not only is it going to be, you know, harder for parents to do the things that they need to make sure that their kids are happy and healthy, you're going to create an additional layer of trauma for these kids. And uh, um, the this is from, I'm reporting, reading from The Hill, the, the newspaper, the online newspaper. It says, President Biden calls legislation that's targeting transgender people in Florida close to sinful. President Biden said, it's just terrible what they're doing. Um, why would the president be weighing in on a, a, a local bill here in the state of, of Florida and, and be use wording that's that strong about it, close to sinful and just terrible what they're doing? Um, I, I take it you agree with what the president's saying there. I do agree with what he's saying. And honestly, Florida is a dumpster fire. And it's a dumpster fire of DeSantis' design. And I feel like he's using his presidential platform to draw attention to it. Because, yeah, we see what's going on from inside of the state. And we're fighting. And don't get me wrong. Even when I leave this state, I am still fighting for Florida. I'm still fighting from afar. I still have ties to this state. My family is still here. I have friends and loved ones that are still here in the trans and LGBTQ community, and I am not giving up on them. I won't give up this fight. Our guest is Heather St. Amon, an organizer and parent in the Tampa Bay area. She's leaving Florida with her transgender daughter. She says it's because of policies that are championed by Governor DeSantis. And speaking of those policies that, that are, it sounds like there are 10 things that are coming down the pike in, in, um, in Florida, because the ACLU posted on its website tracking 10 anti-LGBTQ bills in Florida. We're going to put that on WMNF.org early this afternoon, so you can see them. But here are just a few of them. Uh, for example, HB 1421, it's titled Gender Clinical Interventions. It says this bill would codify what Florida medical boards did in 2022, restricting hormone therapies, puberty blockers, and surgeries for trans minors under most circumstances. So I guess this bill is similar to the one that they were they were considering yesterday. That one had more to do with judges and how judges are, are able to, what evidence they're able to weigh when they're making decisions about custody. There's also SB 254, which are treatments for sex reassignment. And it, a summary is this proposal purports to protect children from being subjected to sex reassignment prescriptions and procedures. And I could go on, of course, since there's 10 of them, I'm not going to read every all, all 10. I will put a link, as I said, on WMNF.org later today. But a lot of it just seems like, um, okay, this is just me taking a, a, a wide angle view of it. It sounds like Florida legislators and the governor want to tell doctors and families what to do. They absolutely do. And not only that, you read the one where they're um, where they want to ban like gender reassignment surgery and all of that for minors. Spoiler alert, there is not anyone out there doing gender reassignment surgery on minors. That is a falsehood that has been wholly like reported by the right that I don't understand where they're getting that from because it is not accurate. You know, that 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 brings me to the next story I'd like to play. This one's a little bit longer. So um, I hope and, I, and it's very I think it's very interesting. And um, I, I hope people uh, stay tuned for the whole thing because it's about three minutes long. But it gets to that point about the spoiler alert about that some of these things aren't even really happening. And wh so why would we have legislation about this? So let's hear from our partners in Fort Myers from WGCU. Carrie Barber reports on several bills that could harm the LGBTQ and trans community. They've, that have been filed in the Florida legislature. And the expert that she talks to kind of gets to the philosophy of why these bills are, have even been introduced and how they can, how they've managed to be able to get so far when they're kind of oftentimes um, nothing burgers as, as, as you might say. So, so uh, here's that story from Carrie Barber. 
Florida legislative session, at least six bills have been proposed that will stifle the lives of trans children and adolescents and their parents. For example, one would not allow a student to determine what pronouns they'd like to use. Several allow for intrusion into a physician's care of a trans person, and one would even remove a child receiving gender-affirming care from their home. But this care has been around since at least the 1970s. So why all the attention now? Helen E. Baker is the executive director of the Whitman Walker Institute, which specializes in healthcare for LGBTQ people. He has a PhD in health services, research, and policy. When you look at the actual medical evidence, gender affirming care has been provided in this country for decades. The first expert medical standard of care for gender affirming care was compiled in 1979. None of this is new. This isn't a controversy. It isn't news. It isn't a new trend or a new phenomenon. Trans people have been around for a very long time. What's new is the boldness, if you will, of Governor DeSantis and other conservative politicians using trans people in such a nakedly political power play. A point that is repeatedly stressed by those opposing care for trans people in Florida is that medical care should not be prescribed to children. But experts who work in the field say prepubescent children are not getting medical care, and they certainly are not getting surgery. Dr. Baker again. For kids, young people before before puberty, there's no medical intervention at all. Anyone who says that there is, is lying. All that you do with a transgender young person before puberty is to listen to them when they tell you who they are. Experts agree that the population of trans people in the U.S. hovers around 1%, a tiny fraction of the population. So again, why all the attention for this minuscule group? Baker says that legislators are depending on the fact that voters are not well-educated when it comes to trans issues. Well, they're essentially banking on the fact that trans people are such a small minority that many people have never knowingly met a trans person. So they're able to kind of project this lie Mm -hmm. of who trans people are into the minds of voters who don't otherwise know who a trans person is. And he adds voters should know that the bigger problem is the government intrusion into people's lives. Everyone needs to be aware that this isn't going to stop with trans people. This is about using government as a weapon to intrude on people's private lives. The bills are currently in session and will be voted on in coming weeks. I'm Carrie Barber in Fort Myers. Well, thanks to Carrie Barber and WGCU for that story. And so let's turn back now to our guest. Heather St. Amand is speaking to us in on Tuesday's Cafe, broad, Tuesday Cafe, brought to you by WMNF in Tampa. I'm Sean Canan. Heather's an organizer and parent in the Tampa Bay area. So Heather, what were your thoughts about hearing from that expert uh, about what his take is on how people, uh, transgender people are medically treated? I agree wholeheartedly. He spoke absolute truth. Um, When, like I said, when my daughter started her care, she was already in puberty. So that's, that's accurate. Um, And I agree that all of these laws are targeted at a base that is wholly uneducated. And that's why I shared my story. Um, It's not easy being super public, but I, I will continue to be because somebody has to be. And I'm doing this for my kid and for all the people that I love that are just like her. One of those bills that was talked about in that story was SB 1320. It's called the Child Protection in Public Schools. The bill would forbid teachers from providing or asking a student for preferred pronouns. Okay, what in the world? Who in the world cares? Honestly, why in the world would you have to make a law, statewide law, to tell a teacher that they can't ask or a student for their preferred pronouns. How is that harmful in any way? It's extremely harmful. Like exactly what is the problem with using some, with respecting someone enough to refer to them the way that they would prefer to be referred to? Like, it's like calling me a different name. I'm not going to answer you. That's <laughs> that's not my name. Um, I just don't understand the rationale. I don't get it. 
kind of harkens back to when Muhammad Ali, when reporters would refuse to to call Muhammad Ali that name, they would refer to his old name and uh, his response and the title of the Dave Zirin book, What's My Name, Fool? So um, sorry, I'm not sure why I got off on that tangent, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. It's almost like, um, you know, rather than just respecting people that uh, taking jabs at them for almost uh, no reason, it seems like there's there's no reason to 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 disrespect someone in that way, it seems. It's just othering people. All this is is othering people that are different. We're not all the same. We're different. And that's what makes this world a beautiful place. And othering a whole section of the population and making them less than, that's not okay. So that brings me to another point about this whole conversation. And, you know, othering, as you said, or or um, putting people, giving them a little bit more stress than they already have. What is it about, is it that that transgender students or young people are so uh, carefree and have have so very little to worry about that they can take it this additional uh, this, this additional stress that's coming at them from big powerful people. I I imagine that their lives um, have some difficulty and maybe you can share what that's like for us. Forty seven percent, forty seven percent of transgender folks by the time they reach twenty one years old have attempted suicide. That is a startling number. If you can't respect somebody's pronouns enough to keep them alive, what does that say about you as a person? I want to remind people that our guest is Heather St. Amand, an organizer and parent here in the Tampa Bay area. She's leaving Florida with her transgender daughter because of policies championed by Governor Ron DeSantis and the Florida legislature. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, broadcasting to you live on the 14th of March, 2023, from the studios of Tampa in Tampa, Florida of WMNF. And we can take some phone calls for the rest of the hour if you'd like to call us in at 813-239-9663. We'll also read your emails or texts, dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-433-0885. Please sign your name so that we uh, can refer to you um, in the way that you'd like to be referred to. David writes in, he says, DeSantis has proven time and again to be an antisocial bully, and I'm so tired of him targeting vulnerable communities. I'm convinced that he gives zero blank about this Florida and his culture war BS. He's only doing it to boost his campaign coffers from bigots and bullies around the country. It's sad. And David goes on to say one more thing. It's very disappointing that George Orwell's 1984 is shifting from fiction to nonfiction in DeSantis's world. He's the king of doublespeak, David says. So thank you for that email from David. Any thoughts there, uh, to Heather, on what David emailed us? I mean, DeSantis is playing to his base beyond Florida right now. He wants everyone to say, ooh, look what he's doing in Florida. So he's playing to the bigots and the transphobes and the homophobes. The country is full of them, unfortunately. Uh, It's getting worse and he's playing to that base because he has presidential aspirations. That's exactly what's behind this. Greg writes in and says, all of Ron DeSantis's laws are human rights abuses and their purpose is fascist scapegoating. That's what Greg says. And uh, he used some uh, stronger language than that, but I'll I'll try to keep it clean. And um, Karen writes in and says, it's just about being kind. I work with people in India and in the Philippines. I use they and them to avoid offending them since I don't know their pronouns. So thank you to Karen and Dunedin. Um, I I appreciate everybody writing in. So um, you can email us at dj at wmnf.org. If you'd like to, also, I should say that Greg wrote also wrote in about um, New College, which is a topic we've covered here a lot. He says that DeSantis's takeover of New College of Florida puts $29 million in donations at risk. There's a link to that article. So thank you for sending that. And you're listening to Tuesday Cafe, broadcasting from WMNF Tampa. I'm Sean Canan, and my guest is Heather St. Amand, an organizer and parent in the Tampa Bay area who is leaving Florida with her transgender daughter because of the policies championed by Governor DeSantis. If if we're going to go to the phones in just a second, perhaps, but let's uh, talk about 
um, what your hopes are for this legislative session. With all of these bills coming through, it's very likely that all or almost all of them will pass. But if you had your way, if you could intervene somehow and maybe just connect with a, a, an important legislator who could make the difference and maybe just get rid of one of these bills, do you have one that that you're really especially paying attention to that you, you think is just worse than any of the others and, and really should be eliminated? They're all terrible but the ban on gender affirming care is going to be the most harmful. Do you think now that um, ban would be put into law if it passes in the Florida legislature, but it's already kind of, um, you know, not the way that the Florida surgeons are allowed to do it essentially starting this Thursday, what difference would it being in, in the law make? Um, the difference in it being in the law is like nobody would have any options. You have no options anymore. Um, you're going to have to leave state for treatment or find ways that are maybe not as safe to get the things that you need to get. And nobody wants anybody to have to be unsafe because they don't have access. And the bill SB 254 that we were talking about earlier that was heard and passed through committee yesterday in the state Senate would make it a felony for doctors or other healthcare professionals to order puberty blockers. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that there are doctors out there who are oftentimes willing to take risks for their patients, but, um, you know, being charged with a felony might draw the line. That might be the difference between uh, a doctor that's just, um, you know, gonna, gonna go out on a limb versus someone who's real willing to go to jail and get a felony. I think that that might be a, a big uh, dividing line. A huge dividing line. And I would understand not wanting to lose your license and not get a felony. You know, like I, I, I get that. It doesn't make it any less harmful. And it just, quite frankly, it sucks like that we're even in this position. The bill's sponsor in the Senate, Clay Yarbrough, who is a re Republican Jacksonville, told the committee yesterday that his measure is aimed at making Florida children safer. So tell me, Heather, do you think that his bill would make your daughter safer? No. Yeah. If his bill would have passed um, back when she came out and back when we started gender-affirming care for her, I don't know that she would be around. Like, there were some very dark days. Um when you like it's not all sunshine and rainbows like it's hard it's hard for trans kids even with gender affirming care it's hard it's hard being different i want to remind people that our guest is heather saint amand an organizer and parent in the tampa bay area who's leaving florida with her transgender daughter so if you have anything you'd like to say shout us give us an email dj at wmnf.org or you can text 813-433-0885 or call 813-239-9663. We have Chris in Clearwater on the line. Hi, Chris, what would you like to say quickly? Oh, what? Sorry, I pushed the wrong button. All right, Chris, you should be on the air right now. Uh, yes, good. Uh, yes, uh, this is Chris Steiner, Clearwater. I was uh, calling to, to ask if maybe um, for your, your child, if you looked at uh, balancing before balancing hormones that can be helped by uh, if your doctors have suggested or done uh, toxicity tests that um, could show that uh, the hormones are being uh, messed up with and then you know which would also indicate a propensity for hormonally induced cancers uh, which is uh, another concern uh, toxicity tests like blood hair nails urine uh, feces uh, the blood shows current levels, but uh, those other tests uh, of the excretions would show, uh, be more likely to show uh, long-term exposure. Of course, everybody has a different ability to detoxify. All right, good question, Chris. Let's ask our guest, Heather St. Amand, what about that um, exposure to toxicity and, and cancer risk? Okay, it's a cancer med, so I'm not really concerned about a cancer risk. Um, my child has her levels checked on a regular basis for everything that is part of her complete care. My child is very well taken care of. We have a team of doctors. I trust their medical advice and she is happy and healthy. 
All right, thank you, Chris. I appreciate you calling in. And if you'd like to join the conversation, 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. David writes, uh, one thing that bugs me the most about this anti-LGBTQ rhetoric and misinformation is the idea that gay and transgender people are grooming children. He, David says, that's BS. I find it disgusting. So um, Heather, maybe since you have uh, firsthand experience that some of us don't, um, were there groomers that that kind of uh, took hold of your child's mind and uh, turned turned her trans? Uh, no, <laughs> that is a huge, huge, huge fabrication. No, <laughs> no, she's not. There's no groomers. The LGBTQ community is not full of groomers and pedophiles, as people would have you believe. <laughs> We're actually you know, very attuned to taking care of our kids and making sure that our kids are safe, respected, and happy. I want to remind people that Heather St. Amon is an organizer and a parent in the Tampa Bay area. She's leaving Florida with her transgender daughter because of policies that have been championed by Governor DeSantis. And we're talking about some of the anti-LGBTQ uh, bills that are moving through the Florida legislature this month. HB 1423, which is called Protection of Children, and it's it, this has to do with, uh, you know, if we keep hearing again and again about uh, drag queens. I'm not sure why all of a sudden um, drag queens are like the, um, the, the, the worst thing in the world right now, according to some people. The bill would allow the state to fine or strip licenses from businesses that admit children to adult live performances which depict or stim simulate nudity, sexual conduct, sexual excitement, specific ac sexual activities, and more. Um, so what's, you know, this kind of goes back to maybe similar to the last question. There's this seems to be this obsession among certain parts of society with people who dress in drag or people who are trans or performances like this. Um, your thoughts, Heather? Oh boy, do I have thoughts on this. Um, I also sit on the board of Pasco Pride. That's something, um, I joined the Pasco Pride organization in 2017. Um, and we had a drag queen story hour um, for years and it was amazing and beautiful. There's nothing sexual about a drag queen story hour where these beautiful queens come and read amazing <laughs> age appropriate stories to children in conservative clothing. Yes, they're in drag, but it's fun for the kids. However, the backlash that we got, we no longer do that right now because it's not safe. It's not safe. And they want to turn something beautiful into something ugly. We have another call with, from Bobby in Sarasota. Let's, uh, let's take that. Hi, Bobby. What would you like to say? Hi, um, interesting show. I just want to say that I wish our legislators and politicians would stop practicing medicine. This has started back with Pam Bondi and her war on narcotics and people in pain who needed narcotics. And you see how that worked out. Then they moved to abortion and they're taking away women's health care rights and interfering between doctors and women's health care together. And now they're harassing the trans community and they don't understand a thing about what they're doing. They just are coming from a prejudicial, politically weighted direction. All right, thank you, Bobby. Let's let our guest weigh in on what you said. So Heather, how would you respond to Bobby in Sarasota? I agree. They are they are doing that. I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. So what would be the, the um, alternative? Um, let's say, uh, I don't know, like if, if, if there's a real problem out there in the world that really needs to be fixed, uh, what's the, what's an alternative with it for a government, a government, well, I'm having difficulty speaking right now, but for a government to get involved and say, look, the medical community in our opinion, is doing something wrong, uh, at what point should there be a line drawn for the government to tell doctors how they can treat their patients? Because like, that seems to be a theme between a lot of these bills and a lot of the ones that Bobby brought up as well. Is there a way that, you know, that government can regulate 
doctors without actually uh, kind of telling them how to practice medicine? I, I don't know, but I, they do not need to be telling doctors how to practice medicine. And I think it would help to have a surgeon general in the state that wasn't a quack. Um, that would certainly help. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kind of lost my train of thought there. Oh, that's okay. I want to. I we're at the end of the show, so I want to thank you so much for coming on Tuesday Cafe today, Heather. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you coming on. Heather St. Amand is an organizer and parent in the Tampa Bay area. She's leaving Florida with her transgender daughter because of policies championed by Gov Governor De Ron DeSantis and the Florida legislature. I want to thank everyone for listening, and I want to thank our phone screener John Dunn, also my earlier guest. Thanks so much to Akile for coming on. You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, News and Public Affairs Director here at WMNF in Tampa. 